satisfaction at finding myself standing here in this place where we're collected together for wisdom, for patriotism, for devotion to principles, and we just find the institutions and the which we live. You have kindly suggested to me that in my hands is the task of restoring peace to the present distracted condition of the country. I can say in return, sir, that all the political sentiments I entertain have been drawn so far as I've been able to draw them from the sentiments which originated and were given to the world from this hall. I have never had a feeling politically that did not spring from the sentiments embodied in the Declaration of Independence. I have often pondered over the dangers which have occurred by the men who assembled here and framed and adopted that Declaration of Independence. I have often pondered of the toils that were endured by the officers and soldiers who have achieved that independence. I have often inquired of myself what great principle or idea it was that kept this confederacy so long together. It was not the mere matter of the separation of the colonies from the motherland, but that sentiment in the Declaration of Independence which gave liberty not alone to the people of this country, but I hope to the world for all future time. It was that which gave promise that in due time the weight shall be lifted from the shoulders of all men. This is a sentiment in the, de in the Declaration of Independence. Now, my friends, can this country be saved upon that basis? If it can, I will consider myself one of the happiest men in the world if I can help to save it. If it cannot be saved without giving up that principle, it will be truly awful. But I was about to say I would rather be assassinated on this spot than surrender it. Now, now in my view of the present aspect of affairs, there need be no bloodshed and war. There is no necessity for it. I am not in favor of such a course, and I may say in advance that there will be no bloodshed unless it be forced upon the government, and then it will be compelled to act in self-defense. My friends, this is wholly an unexpected speech, and I did not expect to be called upon to say a word when I came here. I supposed it was merely to do something towards raising the flag. I may therefore have said something indiscreet. I have said nothing but what I am willing to live by, and if it be the pleasure of Almighty God, die by.